Hello, everyone. This is Akata Weston. Thank you for joining us again in the world of Venus. Today, as you can see, I have a beautiful sister here. Her name is Shannon Ronnie. We are both certified Galactic Astrologers, and um, it is the first time we connect. Um, but we have so much in common, and I'm sure today conversation will just flow beautifully about love, about our journey, and um, how the divine bring us here today. So let's present Shannon. Thank you for joining. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing really interesting. I'm feeling very like activated and also a little bit like so much energy coming through that feels new. Mm -hmm. And it's like almost like just getting ready for something, not sure what yet. So I'm really been focusing on grounding lately, mm. just allowing things to come and to flow without feeling the need to take action, but just allowing the, allowing myself to be in flow. How are you? I think I have the same feelings as you. I am, oh well, the fact that I am quite exhausted from my six months driving around everywhere, going around. And now finally I am um, at my sister's place here in Vancouver and it's like, oh, now I can relax a little bit yeah. and someone else look after me. My sister, she's younger, but she is like the older sister to me, like <laughs> she organized my life. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. And, and, and I don't need to think about the cooking and anything else. And so it is a good feeling to be looked after, to yeah. be taken care of. And, um, but I do agree with the feelings that you have about this. Sometimes I feel my heart is being spread open and feeling these tensions and, and, and heavy beating. That I think we are more or less feeling that there's something in the air, something is going to happen, but we don't know what. Yeah. We are waiting, and in the meantime, chill out. <laughs> Nothing we can yes. do. Yes. I would love to share a dream I had last night. Perfect. Because I think it fits so perfectly for the times that we're in. And. I haven't remembered my dreams for a couple of weeks. Like sometimes mm. I have very vivid dreams and I remember them. And sometimes I don't remember a thing. So um, last night I had a dream that I was standing high on this mountaintop and I could see mm. the entire world. Like mm. just saw so far out and I started seeing explosions going off mm. everywhere. Mm. And I thought they're okay. Like it's okay. They're in the distance. Like I'm okay. And it was like, oh, like all of this talk and all of this kind of chaos that is like outside of us and happening right now. Like mm. okay, just stay in your center. You know you're guided. You know you're protected. And it started getting closer and closer. And then I started going into like a bit of fear. And I'm like, okay, like I have to take action. I can't just mm. stay here. I have to move. And it got closer and closer and I came down off the mountain and I was starting to come across the like, people and all of these people were going in this one direction. Not really frantic, but just like, we need to get to safety. We need to get to safety. And my intuition, my divine guidance was to go in the opposite direction. And as soon as I made that decision to follow that guidance, like, I'm like, this is the way to follow my path, to follow guidance and not to get caught up in, in the chaos and everything that's going on. And like all these explosions going off, like everything will be okay. Just like keep going. And then I like, I woke up and I was just sharing this with my sister and I'm like, oh my goodness, like, I get, like the significance of this dream was because there is so much going on outside of us that's really stay on your path, stay guided, follow your intuition. Like you've got this. 
and also keeping that energy in that space to help others do the same during these times. And I think, okay, like that is like, we're on the right path. There's a lot of unknown, but we're on the right path and we are being guided always. Well, today I have changed my background. I just moved a little bit so we can see. Ah. So that was me at Sedona. And it is called the Devil Bridge. And so I was there at striking a pose and uh, and the fact I love this photo so much is that horizon in front of us. On the devil bridge that you know with the 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 the, the, the resonance of the of, of the of the name and 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 you look out how much unknown we are facing every day. Every day, even you in your home and, and the cities that you, you've been living, there's still so much unknown. There's nothing we can actually control, right? And um, while you are talking um, with, with your dream, I have, it comes back to me, one of the meditation I had, I think three years ago, and... Um, in this meditation, I was having a conversation with Sun Jung Ming. Like I do channeling, but I do cha I don't channel. Like they channel through me to give messages to the whole world. I have no I have nothing to give to the whole world. Mine is just a little conversation between me and them. And in this case, it was with um Sun Jung Ming. And for some reason, I was asking him about, you know, when the shift come, when the pole shift and, and, and all that, we don't know what happened, right? Yeah. We do. And um, the outside world is putting us in this fear stage that we need to get prepared with food for two years, shelter under underground and and water, uh, electricity, what can we do, and, and, and all this. And he was saying, who can ever know which place is safe? Who can ever know what would you need after the shift? If you can bring your body with you or not, Right? And he was telling me, there's nothing, absolutely nothing to do except to bring our consciousness so high, so above, to get out, bringing our light body to go out on the other side. If I can arrive to this stage, <laughs> Right? Yeah. And, yes. And it's... and somehow in these three years, I think consciously or unconsciously, we are already preparing this new paradigm on the other side that we don't even know. Yeah. And if anything happens, we meditate, <laughs> go to the other <laughs> <laughs> We're here for it. <laughs> That's, yes, I feel so like this, it's been all about preparation for this, for this energy that is just unknown and for this unknown shift, like this is, it is unknown and is, there is no way to control. And also the comfort for because there's been times where I'm like, turn right. Okay, I'm going to turn right. There's been, I've made some really big moves these last four years. And it's like, sell your house. Okay, sell your house. Move across the country. Okay, I'm going to do it. 
don't know where I'm going to go, but there's just this guidance that I can't figure it out. I can't do it. I will be guided though, and I'll let that guidance come in. And it's been like preparing to allow the guidance to continue to come through and let that be the guiding light. Let that be the way without trying to, for me to get into my mind or anyone to get into their mind. We can't prepare for it. We don't know. But when we just allow, it's like, okay, everything's going to be okay. And as you shared, <laughs> wherever we go, it's, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. And enjoying the path and the journey. That's also like preparing for that has been very strong within me as I don't know. When you reached out to me, it was a yes. I want to, I want to talk with you. I want to have a conversation with you. I knew right away it was an immediate yes. And just to share the frequency with you just to go into that space and have a conversation and allow that energy to flow, knowing that that is also the way. And I've been understanding frequency more and more. And the conversation, it's like, I, the way I feel like talking with you, it's so lovely and it's so enjoyable yet it's not a frequency that I can be on all the time because <laughs> it already takes me up like so high. So it's like, okay, I still am walking on earth and walking this path <laughs> on the ground. So finding that balance and that harmony, but also enjoying learning about the universal language of frequency and enjoying that newness because I've never experienced it before and I'm experiencing it more and more. And the more I become authentic and who I am, the more I experience it. So it's, it's harmonizing both of those. I think in our spiritual journey, when we, when we all start, we, th we tend to think we need to learn, we need to study, we need to read books and books, doing courses and after courses and, and everything. Which in a way is useful because like, I think they, they serve more like a trigger to calling out what we already have inside. It's like a little punctuation, right? I need to a little needles to say, ah, okay, I have that inside me. All right. But ultimately, whatever we have learned is just learning. And we still somehow have our attention outward of someone helping me, guiding us and 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 telling us what to do now until one day like you four years ago that I, I, I understand a little bit of, of your story that you just packed and moved across country I mean still in America America now that I know it's so big <laughs> it's, okay. it's a continent like throw from them from the west to the east and drive back and I've traveled the whole damn Europe, but I'm still here in America. And, and the scope of moving from one place to the others, and that is exactly, I think, what the divine is asking you. Do you trust enough? Mm -hmm. Yes. And there's, it's um, it's almost not even a choice anymore. No. If I, if, 
if I try to make something happen, it doesn't happen. If it's like in flow and it's like, just like allowing it, then it happens. I'm like, oh, I couldn't, I couldn't have made this. I couldn't have planned this. I couldn't have created this without surrendering to the divine. So it's that trust. And every time I get to a place now, I know I'm like, hey, just trust. Just sit with the trust and have faith. Because now I know like, to fear or to get out of it or try to control it, it's not even an option anymore. It's not possible. And I think like speaking with you and again, having a very similar journey, it's it's shining the light for others to say it's safe now, come along, because we have been so repressed as a society and it doesn't matter like every culture, just moving from the east or from the west coast to the east coast, I, I might as well be, <laughs> we speak the same language, language English, but it's a whole different culture, experience, way of living that it was a culture shock at first and had to acclimate. It was so like perfect. Like had I gone or stayed in safety, oh, it would not be as magnificent. And I think like, I woke up <laughs> last night and I came, I'm like, I have to write this down. <laughs> and it was really, it was that, it was after that dream, but after that came Oh, some of us are walking ahead on the path so we can shine the light back to lighten the path and say it's safe now. You can be all of who you are. You can be authentically you, be guided, surrender and trust the process. It's safe. And it's so, I'm like, oh, but that, there is this unknown, but there's also this, come on. <laughs> This is the way <laughs> I will show you. And all I'm going to do, because I don't have the answers, I'm going to shine the light so you can find those answers within you as you are sharing that. You have the answers within. It is safe to trust yourself. It is safe to know that whatever you've been feeling your entire life, wanting to do, wanting to follow your passions, wanting to kind of like break free to be all of you, it's safe now. There's enough of us that have walked ahead that we know it's like you you're gonna enjoy this. You're gonna have a really good time. Like it's time to go. And it is the biggest lessons that I have learned in these last six months. I didn't plan it. I didn't know how I can ever afford it. I didn't know one single details, how to organize. I never been to America except New York 20 years ago, 10 years ago. And I say, great. Okay. I will do that. One condition. <laughs> I'm not going to travel as a gypsy. I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only condition I put. <laughs> and it turns out exactly this way. Like every places that I go, I didn't even know why I go to places that I have never heard of. Sedona is Sedona, fair enough. But yeah. apart from Sedona, Manchester, every other places. I have no clue at all. And the gift that I receive behind the scenes is just tremendous. Yeah. And in your place, we didn't get to meet. Which I you... know. That's so interesting. I was like, what? You were here? <laughs> Maybe there was a purpose. I have gone through the darkest moment when I was there. 
Uh, I had so much fear creep up from nowhere. And I think there, um, it was actually close to one of the node points, the, the, um, the ley line point. And uh, I was feeling it so badly. The, the little times that I spent there, I was like out of my mind. And, and and I think everything happened for reasons and, yeah. and I was meant to to be just by myself to live mm -hmm. through that. Oh gosh that, that... <laughs> yeah, that makes sense that so you were definitely meant to experience it that way. Oh yeah and um, yes, and I think, the, 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 the teaching of letting go of our ego mind, as you say, right? You try to control, try to organize. And, and I think ultimately is bringing us back to this divine love. I mean, it, it sounds so, <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> And um, sugar coating, how, how to say it? But it is like fasting that you are loved. You are so loved. Mm -hmm. Not because of you need to demonstrate anything. Just because of you, you of who you are, your authentic self, and say, look here. Yes. <laughs> yes it's such that um i it was about two years ago when i first like felt this just like came to me i'm like oh my goodness this is why we do it this is this incarnation where there's this suffering and we keep coming over and over and over again because that divine love when you feel it it's the feeling that can only be experienced it is a real feeling. It is, as you said, you don't have to work for it. You don't have to jump over hoops, which part of the experience we want to. <laughs> uh, I'm like, oh my goodness, I would do this a million times over just to have this feeling that I'm feeling in this moment. I would keep doing it. I'm like, oh, well, we do keep doing it. That's the purpose of incarnation. Like, that's why we sign up for this. That is why we choose choose it because that divine love that you're speaking of, like people are like, mm, it's not real. Like, it's not really like understanding it, not wanting to trust in ourselves or themselves where they're at on their journey. And to me, I am always telling people like, keep, keep going. You just are going to experience more of life, more of what you're resisting, more of what you're fighting against. So keep going because you haven't gotten enough out of the lesson that you're learning. So keep going because that's to take that away from anyone. And this has been one of my areas of healing is I want to take you out of pain. Like this is like, oh, I know the answers. I can fix it for you. Just do this and you'll feel better. I will get you out of pain temporarily because <laughs> I'm not allowing people to do it themselves. So one of the greatest lessons is to love them the way they will eventually love themselves and be loved by the divine and allow them to fully experience their experience and not take that away. Like that's been healing for me and for me to learn that on my own. So I'm not trying to rescue everyone from their life experience, which is meant to be their life experience. Well, ultimately we can't, right? And um, I think doing the service that we are doing and when people comes to us, it, I think it was the moment that they realized something need to change and they don't come to us for curiosity. 
it's not like they want to know their horoscope for next year, how it's going to happen. I mean, like, yes, that's some people doing that, but I don't think they will ever attract to our energies. And, and, and whoever come have already gone through so much. They have yeah. already done so much. Just tiny little trigger that they need. Yeah. And sometimes we just stay there and listen, right? <laughs> Be present. Yeah. And to show them that there's no judgment. There's no, there's not even a definite answer, as you say. Who has? No. And I think the kind of love which I want to bring us to now, to the next topic is the kind of love we come with through the Magdalena's energies, through the essence. I, I have never read your chart, I don't know. Maybe you have also the, 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 the full royal star or, or with um, Angel Gabriel's with essence as well, you tell me. And, um, but I do think that many of us is bringing out this ultimate divine mother, the, 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 the sacred love that we, we we are trying to share in our everyday life, through our services, through our energies. Yeah. Definitely, I have I have them throughout my chart. Mostly, like the four royal stars are sextile or trine. Mm. So they're very much like my sun and moon is all trines to like the uh, royal stars in the galactics. And so... For my experience, it's to really, I went through a lot to allow myself to trust those energies were mine and that the messages were like coming through without the fear of being like misunderstood. Or if I say this, I'm going to sound crazy because <laughs> I see this and I'm seeing so much that who do like I don't have an example outside of me I'm not seeing anybody else live in life this way so I'm just going to try to to fit in and like hold all that back so it's very much um has flown or weaved throughout my life but really since doing the galactic astrology has it really kind of like anchored into who I am now I'm like, oh, okay, now I get it. Now I get to open up to all these energies and all the divine messages that come through and play with those energies confidently, knowing what they are and why I chose that like blueprint for this incarnation. It's like, oh, okay. I get it really. And it's when you say like the Magdalene's, I'm not sure like about like plural. I look at Mary Magdalene and like the energy of Jesus, like the masculine, the feminine and harmonizing both because I think so much has been hidden from us that we are relearning or remembering by going within. As you said, we can read all these books, but it's really about us remembering who we are and like activating it within us. Like it's already within us and activating that. And now it's, for me, it's like being called to share the message, which we talked a little bit about before we got on the call was, oh my goodness, this connection that started coming through as we were planning this, planning to get together and talk, the, the, breadcrumbs of Magdalene, Mary Magdalene and the messages. I'm like, oh, yes, to share messages because sometimes I hold back because I feel like I should study and know it from like reading books or reading what others have said and I'm learning to know 
trust my own guidance and bring those messages to others because the, the, that's where the answers are. They're within us. And we are. I loved the podcast. It was Asa. Yeah. Asa. Asa. Yeah. She said, like, we, we each complete each other. Yes. We're each a piece of the puzzle. So we each have something to add to the whole. Like, so then I have to make, okay, stop. Like I've taken so many courses, read so many books. Now I'm like, okay, who, what message do I have? Untangle from all that I've learned and be true to myself and be authentic in my message and share that. So that is my current, it, it, it's a challenge. It's one that I love and I get really excited about because then it's like I get to create through like as an individual with my gifts, not from others. Much of what I've learned is from others. My favorite quote right now is, I think it was like Isaac Newton, but if I've seen further, it's because I stand on the shoulders of giants because reading and taking courses does activate and unlock the knowledge within us. And having these conversations that we are having unlocks this knowledge within us. It's like sharing that energy or that frequency like activates more of what we know so we can add to the whole. There is an image in um, in my website and it's like on the on homepage right at the, at, at the end. And there is these beings human-like beings and um and he has this key opening his heart chakra in in one of my meditation and um i was meeting yoshua inside the tomb where he's supposed to be buried and and inside there he gave me a gift in a box and to make it short when I went out I was on the field and when I opened that box it was a key and as we know the meaning of symbolisms, keys can 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 the key itself can represent, you know, to unlock all wisdoms, all knowledge. But instead, I turn around as if I was hiding. That I'm not so sure what I was doing. I was uh, instead of doing that, and I was turning around and and sort of like, yeah, covering myself, hiding it, and I was doing what that pictures was doing. I was opening my heart, and I think it was two years ago. And so, uh, anyway, and and after that. The message I have received was instead of opening the universal knowledge that you can easily touch on, you open your heart. And it is even more than you can ever learn. The divine, end of the day, do they ask us for certificates? <laughs> okay, prove me you have learned that, all right? <laughs> um, I just like the journey that you have done. I mean, if you trust, Things get to organize by themselves. Uh, someone I saw, they had on their handle, um, credentials, spirit. <laughs> like, 
exactly. <laughs> and it feels like they're amazing and they're great, but they're not where we're headed. It is, you know, as you said, like, like open your heart, remembering the, how I look at it as well as, as we shift, like babies being born. And I know you've talked about, you and I have both talked about this, babies being born now, create a safe, nourishing, nurturing environment for them to learn who they are. And then they create a life out of their natural gifts, out of their passions, because they already know what they're meant to do. And every child born is part of creation and creating the new. Like, there will never be a lack. There will never be uncertainty. And to me, like, this is how we're, we're evolving into this from the divine. So it's like reversing it's like what we've gone through is like figuring out, like I never could find in school, like a curriculum that matched my passions. I was like, I don't want to do any of this. <laughs> I will do this until I figure it out. And it took me many years and I enjoyed the journey. I learned so much and absolutely was part of what I was meant to do. Yet now I'm seeing it more and more like, oh yeah, create the environment for children to be born, know who they are, then they follow their passions and everything will be way more incredible than we can imagine. And there will be no credentials, there will be no pieces of paper, there won't, that won't be necessary because we will all be fulfilling our purpose that would be so wonderful <laughs> and um yeah i think yes generation with generations after generation we have done more and more in preparing yeah. this supposed to be shift paradigm i don't know i don't i, I really don't know what how to call it and 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 would it be like some as some say that split of the of the of the mother Gaia that some would go to the other dimensions and some just stay here and they go through yeah. this incarnation again and again but you know when we shall see <laughs> we shall see and be present that's all we can do. It's so, because if you think, like, I'm always impressed by, but people will say things about, like, the millennials, like, label these, like, generations, and, like, they mm -hmm. don't want to work. They don't want to do that. And I'm like, no. They want to do what they're here to do. They want to, like, they want to live a life that's fulfilling. They don't want to choke a punch, what, a time card? <laughs> yes, when you enter the factory. <laughs> yeah. And it's, I had a client once that was sharing her mom had been, has been a teacher for 17 years and she's little, like five, six year olds. She's like, I've never seen anything like it. They refuse to do the work. I'm like, yeah, because they know that they're here for something else. They're not here to conform. They're not here to be conditioned. They're here to create. <laughs> they're here to be and it's like it's very significant so there's so much fear that is happening with so many that are attached to the idea of what it is to be human or to be successful and to follow this path that we've all been conditioned to believe that there's this <laughs> very young <laughs> little like toddlers <laughs> that are rising up and rebelling and like, nope. <laughs> and what's coming out of that, that I'm seeing is such intelligence, such passion, creating new inventions. It's so remarkable to witness. And it will, 
who knows how long it will take. Like, to me, that is definitely the shift. <laughs> We're evolving. Like evolution, we've exhausted this experience. Now we're coming, like as you're saying before, coming up into this like consciousness of this divinity to experience that because that's that's what's that's what's next. The next generation has been the first key that I ever received when I started this awakening journey. And the fact that in my vision, I can see a place where they can laugh, they can play, the kind of freedom that they feel is something. Yeah, yeah I think we, we are somehow, somewhat being and living example even through our background, our pack, our baggages from from our life experience that we are sharing, knowing you can actually ever you want. It doesn't matter. People say, "What about your car? If it broke down in the middle of something, it broke back. I have help. Okay, why worried? Yeah." Insurance, insurance, so you can stay calm and never yeah. use it. <sighs> That's like some conversations I have lately. I'm like, okay, we're not talking about this. You know what I talk about, <laughs> like with my neighbors or people around me. I'm like, you want to come over and sit and have some coffee, have some tea. We'll watch the butterflies. We'll watch the birds, and we will talk about nature cooking that that i don't talk about that <laughs> i am giving you permission to rest and to lay down your worries but i don't need to know what's happening with the other neighbors and <laughs> so it's like it is being that example and not it to me like it Yes, some will move on without finding their, the, the divinity within, yet I will never turn away from somebody who seems so far away from it that it's not possible. If they are in my life or they come across my path, I'm going to see them as the divine. And and allow them to lay down their worries as best I can. And sometimes that is a no. <laughs> sometimes I get a little bit sassy <laughs> and create boundaries for myself. Uh, it is learning to break these habits that are so deep within us that just want to focus on travel safe, have a safe flight, have a safe drive, like, be safe. Like, oh my goodness, like, it's dangerous out there. Like, no, it's not. <laughs> I think people expect someone like me that is always up in the air. So the moment I get, I, I, I set my foot in America, I would get raped, I would get robbed, I would get killed. I would not like everything what happens to me. Therefore, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I think when we have our frequency so high, that doesn't mean that we always have totally different. But with our frequency, when we are 
in certain consciousness that we are in certain level. What is not compatible with us, that doesn't resonate with us, they don't even come close. No way. No. We no longer need those experiences. And that's one of the challenging things for kind of like transitioning and raising your frequencies and being authentic is it's challenging, I will say, to say or to have somebody who's in a lot of suffering and a lot of pain or has like a sickness that that is happening because that is part of your lesson. That is part of, again, like that frequency match because like I know that I no longer need an experience that where I'll get mugged or like something like that would happen to get me back into alignment. Like, no, like I've had enough of those experiences that have that I've explored and come to realize like, oh, I mean, it, it actually was, I had four really horrible experiences happen like in a week. And I thought, oh my goodness, this was like five years ago. These are just situations. This is, it will pass. If I let this take me down and I have a meltdown or like, like really dramatic about it, then it's going to be an issue. I was like, oh, it was so like clear. I'm like, oh, this is just life happening. This is just experience. Like, okay, like everything will be fine next week. And if I stop talking about it or dwelling on it or letting that like one was a sickness, like take me away, like I was really sick. Like, okay, then it will last and it will linger and it will stay within me. And I just had this like, oh, okay. I get it. I got it. It's an experience and it's teaching me something. You know what, Shannon? We can go on forever. <laughs> and and I think there is another topic that I would like to talk with you is regarding twin flame and um soulmate and a little bit more specific. But we will leave it next time yeah i give you the honor to wrap up today <laughs> <laughs> that <Sorry>. was <laughs> lovely we didn't have an outline we didn't have a plan we talked a little bit we let it flow and my feelings my energy my frequency I hope those that are watching this got to feel an experience with us. The light in us is within the light in you and all of us. And I hope that it was fun. It was fun. It was fun for me. It was very enjoyable. It's, it's fantastic. It's so... Um child life and without any well between us before us and around us and um, which i am so grateful thank you everyone for joining us and um, i'm looking forward to chat with shannon again thank you me as well thank you see you next time see you next time <laughs>